There's something so satisfying about setting up a new MacBook and making it your own. So in this video, I'll be sharing some great customization apps and tips that are perfect for both those new to the MacBook experience and longtime users like myself. The first few features are to do with the dock. The MacBook dock is fixed at the bottom of the screen as standard, and I find that to waste a lot of space. So you have a few different ways to change this. By going into your settings and then desktop and dock, you can change the size of your dock to make it bigger or smaller. You can also select to automatically hide the dock when you're not using it, giving you the full screen to work with. But I find it a bit distracting when you're on an app and place your mouse near the bottom of the screen and your dock pops up accidentally, which is why I've also repositioned my dock to the left of the screen. Now, when browsing or working, my dock stays completely out of the way. If you want, you can apply magnification to the dock so that when you hover your mouse over it, the apps magnify in a wave-like motion, although I find this a little distracting, so I've turned it off. Next up, let's look at your wallpapers. Apple introduces new wallpapers with each new macOS update, but the big update came last year with macOS Sonoma's live wallpapers. These dynamic wallpapers start moving when your laptop's locked and enter screensaver mode, and then slowly become static when your laptop is unlocked. You can also choose to shuffle wallpapers so that it changes automatically, giving you a fresh desktop every time you open up your MacBook. Another way to change your wallpapers is through a great wallpaper app called Unsplash Wallpapers, which I featured in a recent video. Unsplash sits in your menu bar and gives you direct access to a large library of high quality, professional grade images. Because it sits in your menu bar, it makes changing your wallpaper really easy. And you can also set up a rotation schedule to update your wallpaper hourly, daily, or weekly. If there's a wallpaper you don't like, you can just press the refresh button and cycle through the wallpapers until you find one you like. Moving on to appearance. In settings and then appearance, you have the option to choose between light mode or dark mode, or automatic so your MacBook will alternate between the two. If you want your system to be even darker than dark mode, I've got a cool tip for you. Go to accessibility, display, and then toggle on reduce transparency. This will make your menu bar, windows, and the app switcher even darker, giving you that real stealthy blacked out look. Then if you notice, the default accent color for the MacBook is multicolor. So different apps will use different colors like yellow in notes and blue in reminders. But you can change this in settings. So you can see if I pick green, then all menus and apps will use green across the entire system. You can also change the look of your mouse by going to accessibility and display, and then scrolling down to pointer. From here, you can pick the outline and fill color, although I like to just keep it the default option. That said, right above it is the option to shake your mouse to locate it, which I've got turned on because this feature is really helpful when working across two screens and you can't find your mouse. Now, if we go back to desktop and dock and scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see a button called hot corners, and these are so helpful for navigating your MacBook. Hot corners let you move your mouse to the corners of your screen to access different actions. There's loads of different options to choose from, but I've got mission control in the top left, desktop in the bottom left, notification center in the top right, and quick note in the bottom right. Let's move on to apps. Downloading third-party apps is one of the best ways to customize your MacBook. And some of the ones I use every day are WhatsApp, Spotify, and Notion. But there's another app platform that's going to take your Mac's customization to another level. Setapp is the sponsor of today's video, and it's one of the best ways to get access to over 250 apps that can completely transform the way you use your MacBook by paying just one monthly subscription, starting at $9.99 a month. You may have noticed that my menu bar looks different to the default Mac menu bar, and that's because I've downloaded Bartender, which lets me customize my menu bar by giving me the option to change its color, make it rounded, hide icons that I'm not using, and more. Now, Bartender usually costs around £20, but with Setapp, you can download as many apps as you want just for that one monthly subscription. Setapp's only got trustworthy, powerful apps, so you don't have to worry about downloading something that's going to harm your MacBook. And the apps are also reviewed by other users, so you can make sure you're getting the best apps for your system. I've also got Notch Nook downloaded, which I've covered on my channel before. This transforms my MacBook Notch into a pop-out Nook, so I can control my media, have shortcuts to apps or websites, and see my calendar. I really like how Setapp has collections, which are app toolkits that are great for different uses. So there's the Setapp Starter Kit, which includes Bartender and Clean My Mac, an AI toolkit, which gives you access to Craft and Spark Mail, and a Productivity Kit, which includes Be Focused and Focus 2. If you need to search for something specific instead, Setapp has an AI assistant that can help. 
So if I want new widgets on my home screen, I can type widgets into the chat function and it gives me a relevant app that I can download. SetApp's a really smart way to get a lot of paid apps for a much lower price. So if you're interested, you can sign up using my link in the description below to get a 30 day trial to SetApp instead of just seven days via the website. Talking of widgets, there are a few that I'd highly recommend. Starting off with the ones already on your MacBook, the ones I use regularly are calendar, weather, reminders, and shortcuts for my lights and appliances. macOS also has a clock widget, which you can customize to be either analog or digital, but I prefer using this flip clock widget instead, as firstly, it's bigger than the macOS clock widget, and secondly, I think it just looks better too. Another great widget is Silicio, which brings music and podcast controls directly to your home screen. So you can see I can pause my current track, go back or skip forward to the next one. If you prefer to have the controls always visible, you can open the Silicio app and the music controls will float in the corner of your screen or wherever you place the widget. With Spotify and Apple Music lacking this feature, Silicio is a great way to add that functionality to your MacBook. Now for a couple of quick tips. The Finder app is how you navigate your MacBook's files and this is how it looks as standard. But once you start navigating deeper and deeper into folders, it's so useful to be able to see the file path to see where that folder is stored. So click on view in the menu bar and click show path bar. And you can now see the file path at the bottom of your window. You can also customize your toolbar by clicking on view and then customize toolbar. You can easily just drag items in and out of your toolbar depending on which ones are your favorite. So I like to have the default icons, but I think adding airdrop to this would be really useful. So I'll drag that into the toolbar. Another cool way to customize your MacBook is to set your lock screen emoji. If you go to settings, this is actually in users and groups rather than in lock screen. Then just press the eye icon next to your name and then click on your picture. You'll see a menu come up that has loads of different options to choose from. So you can have different emoji animals or your own emoji in different poses and styles, or you can just use an emoji instead or just the first letter of your name. Once you've picked your image, press Control, Command and Q to lock your screen and you'll see your emoji moving around on your lock screen. The last customization tip I have for you is that you can add websites to your dock and they behave like apps. A website I visit really often is YouTube and opening Safari first and then clicking on YouTube in my favorites bar is a bit of a long way to access the website I'm always visiting. So instead, you can click on File in your menu bar and then click on Add to Dock. A pop-up will come up which will let you rename your app, but I'm happy to keep it as YouTube. And then you just have to click Add. Then you can see the website's been added to my dock and it behaves just like an app. So I can browse YouTube without any distractions, without the Safari URL or any of my favorites, and it sits there directly on my dock, which is great because YouTube doesn't have a native Mac app. This works for any website, so if you want to access a site that you use really often and it doesn't have a Mac app, this is the perfect way to get quick access to it. And that's 20 customization apps and tips for your MacBook. I want to hear your favorite tips from the ones I mentioned today, or if you have one that I haven't spoken about, let me know in the comments below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.